Thank you for tuning into White Centipede Noise Podcast. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This podcast is made possible by viewer and listener support. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider supporting it at patreon.com slash white centipede noise. White Centipede Noise is a label and mail order based in Germany, releasing top quality noise on tape, CD, and vinyl. White Centipede Noise is also the premier EU-based distributor of international noise. Visit whitecentipedenoise.com to see available label releases and weekly distro updates. Hello and welcome to White Semi Noise Podcast. Today my guest is known for his projects VMS Elite, Capers, he ran the fantastic label Team Boro Tapes, he's now running Usagi Productions, he's an active and vocal member of the noise community, and an overall nice guy. He's joining us today from Gothenburg. Please welcome Eric Neustrand. Eric, okay. I pronounced your name okay this time? You pronounce it just fine, yeah. Just fine, okay. Uh, welcome. Uh, thank you for being with us today. And mm-hmm. sorry, not us, me. Um, so we'll jump right into your projects. You are known primarily for two projects, I would say, these this day and age. Um, Capers and VMS Elite. You have a few other monikers. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll cover those at some point. But um, can you tell me about... VMS Elite and Capers, what is the difference? Um, how do you differentiate them, and how how did they come into formation? Well, my first project was Capers. Uh, I guess uh, I've, I first tried out doing noise uh, in 2008, I think, or thereabouts. But I didn't do anything with those sounds. I just made some recordings. Uh, mm-hmm. And kept them. I've used them later on as source sounds, but they was just you know domestic sounds. Uh, so when I started Capers, I, I used those. Uh, I, basically, I, I just I just plugged stuff in and pl- plugged it in intentionally wrong to see what happened. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I tried to do some slow muddy stuff and yeah that's how capers came about i i did a, a tape fishers in i don't know 20 copies or so uh handed out to friends sold a few uh what year roughly was that the first capers release uh 2014 i think okay yeah yeah so yeah and VMS Elite. Yeah, VMS Elite was born when uh, a friend of mine, his birthday was coming up. So I I sat down on my living room floor and uh, plugged in the gear and I had a sandwich and I just switched the gear, gear on. I intended it to be a capers tape, but it the sounds were just too fast and much sharper. Uh, so it became more like a harsh noise release. I don't see capers as harsh noise really. It's just just noise, basically. Sure. But VMS Elite was it turned out to be not capers at all. So yeah. So and and but but the recording turned out it was the destruction derby tape. I should mention. Uh, I think in 2015, and I think it turned out better than expected. So I I I released it. Yet again, in a like small edition, 20, 30 copies. And, but then I made more. There have been several editions. Yeah, people kept asking, asking for it. So I did like 10 more, 10 more. I, I, I picked that up, I think, around 2015 or 2016, mm-hmm. um, shortly after moving to Germany. And it was kind of one of my first moments where I had a little bit of extra money to to pick up some noise tapes after yeah. not being able to pick anything up for a while. So I picked it up from Torden Lude from yeah. Alex. Yeah. And um, for me, it was kind of a, 
that was kind of a moment in time, I think, where noise was experiencing a lull in in both quantity and quality. And for some reason, that that tape really um, kind of just really thrilled me. It was very simple, but still really like got me excited and kind of put a, a battery in my back for kind of re starting my own noise activities, which were kind of also on, on hold at that time. So that's a huge tape for me actually. And, uh, like I said, yesterday I was looking for it to, to, to play it again. I hadn't played it in a little while and, um, couldn't find it. And I was really panicking. Like I thought, you know, I mean, I don't know what I thought could have happened to it, but, but I did find it and I, Got to play it nice and loud. So big fan of that tape. Um, so so Capers is essentially your your core project. Is that correct? Is that how you would see it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. I see it that way. I always have. I, I've been more busy with VMS Elite, uh, right. more prolific, productive. Uh, I guess I... I was going to say I put I, I put more care into doing capers, but I'm not sure. I've, I've done a few that I'm not that very pleased with, <laughs> hmm. so I, I I can't back that up. But um, yeah, capers is my core project, and VMS Elite is. I mean, I I, I buried that project. Uh, it's retired. It. Yeah. No. I, Why did you retire it? It's mostly the name, really. Uh, um. I don't know. I I think uh, the tapes, the VMS Elite tapes, are so different to me. They're, each one is pretty different from the other, and that was not really my intention. So I think, and I I can't do it any other way. So I don't know if it feels. If I am to put a put a moniker on something, I, I want it to be more coherent. I think, such okay, as tapers. Sure. Uh, yeah. So I'll just do things under my real name, unless it's Capers for now. Yeah. Okay. Um, VMS Elite also seem to have very uh, specific themes. Like, yeah. um, tell me a bit about that. Yeah. Well, it started as sort of a you know, racing sports thing. <laughs> <laughs> I think. Yeah. Speedway. Yeah. Speedway yeah. motorcycling. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty That's into big, that. right? Uh, what? That's kind of big in Sweden, isn't it? Yeah, it's uh, it's big in the countryside, the more rural areas, I think. Although the big cities has have teams as well. Uh, yeah. I rarely run into anyone here in Gothenburg, for example, who's who's following the sport. But back where I come from, a, a lot of people are into it. And I, I went to I went to see racing as, as a kid, and yeah. Cool. Do you feel in any way that um, – how do you feel the reception has been to VMS Elite uh, versus Capers uh, from, I guess, the, the general noise public? Uh, much more I, – I, I've gained much more affirmation for, for the VM, VMS Elite stuff than for Capers, for sure. And I guess – to me, VMS Elite is pretty much standard stuff. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't set out to do anything really specific with it. So, I, I think Caper stands out. But uh, uh, is that maybe part of also a reason that you have decided to retire VMS Elite? Yeah, maybe. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I, I tried that stuff, and yeah. <laughs> basically I, I i shouldn't say i'm done with it I, I love to do to do that kind of stuff but uh yeah but i think so you're, the, you're... The, the audience for capers is smaller but yeah mm. that's strange I, I have a few dedicated fans <laughs> yeah <laughs> i do i'm one of them yeah i'm glad for sure i love it um you record nowadays uh Continue. You continue under Capers, but you record now under your own name. Mm -hmm. What's the differentiation there? Well, uh, still, I mean, with, under my own name, I, I can be more adventurous, I guess. Uh, Are the rules to Capers? Yeah, 
there are rules. It has to be slow. Uh, I wouldn't say muddy, but uh, mm, yeah, there are there are definitely rules. Uh, stripped down setup always for for capers and uh, yeah, it's it's a different process. I I don't I don't layer as much. I don't have like a hundred sounds on tape that I stuck upon each other uh, yeah. as I do with, with always did with, with VMS Elite. Uh, right. What's your general gear that you use for capers? Uh, Fostex 4-track, uh, a, a pedal or two, uh, some cables. <laughs> maybe, maybe a tape with some source sound to, to feed okay. into the... Into the and then I I do like no input feedback and yeah mm -hmm. play around with that. So in using such a minimal a minimal setup, do you do you go into recording sessions um, with a specific sound in mind that you want to achieve, or do you kind of let the limitations of the gear bring you somewhere? Uh, both, I think. Uh, sometimes I, I, I definitely have something in mind. Uh, when when I did the, the lungs recording, which uh, first came out as a tape on Freedom Club in Canada, and now me and Dan released it on Sagi as a CD. Yep. Uh, I definitely had something in mind. Uh, I wanted it to be a boring sort of... Oh, boring is maybe, maybe the wrong world, but, but yeah, very monotonous album i had an iron iron lung that was just pumping in mind sort of yeah. slowly <laughs> yeah yeah okay. so yeah um and and other uh, in other recordings i've yeah sort of just let, let the signs sounds you know develop as a, sure. uh, as as they wish and i and i i just tweak a bit yeah. do you do you feel like uh, capers has more ability to convey emotion or do you try to convey emotion in or, or some sort of feeling or atmosphere mm, i think so yeah yeah it's it's yeah but it's, do you think it's hard to put into you, words but yeah sure of course but do you think do you think noise is suited to convey emotions in yeah. general like noise noise as a as a not necessarily as a genre but as a as a as an entity like as a as a as a scientific phenomena do you think there are do you think there's ability to convey emotion through it without um say artwork or without um Track Certainly. titles, or... definitely. I, I, I definitely think so, uh, and I think a lot of art artists don't see that potential. They they overload their releases with imagery and concepts and whatever, but in the end, it sounds it could have been in any release. You know, it's just the same noise you see on other releases, but with completely other themes. They don't. Yeah, it's it's definitely uh, yeah. But do you think it's possible? You think this the noise can be loaded with with this emotion? Definitely, uh, I think, and I think a lot of good noise is mm -hmm. right. Yeah. Do you think there are inher inherent uh, emotions or or atmospheres to noise, or do you think it's uh, do you think it's open, hundred percent? I think it's. I, I think it's inherent to some extent. I, I think, of, for example, a lot of a lot of people perceive noise as aggressive or dark. Uh, wh whatever the the concept might be, I think. This episode of White Centipede Noise podcast is brought to you by Oxen Records, an independent label focused on artists in the field of harsh noise, based in Los Angeles, California. Recent releases include Peter J. Wood's Collages C30, Unsustainable Social Condition, Rapid Polarization 2 C20, Circuit Wound, A Sudden Lapse of Concentration CD, Scathing, A Capital Beneath the Waves CD,
and Leah P. Surviving the Familiar CD. www.oxenrecords.bigcartel.com So you're living in um, Gothenburg, mm -hmm. which has a pretty um, rich kind of noise history. Mm -hmm. I w I'm, I'm not an expert on how far it goes back, but I feel like there have been many kind of waves of activity, but particularly in the in the 2000s. Yeah, definitely. Um, what impact has the city had on you in your development as an artist? Uh, a lot, I think. Uh, well, I, I started to become a librarian in the in 2012 to 2015, and uh, uh, I met my girlfriend there. Uh, at the university, so and and I moved moved into a place here in Gothenburg, and um, coming here uh, as a noise artist, I was sort of vaguely acquainted with uh, the individuals here, here Dan and and Ma Matthias, uh, and all the others. Um, so I I sort of just moved right into this context and uh, if it hadn't been here i'm not sure i would have i mean i i as soon as i started recording myself i i, I got a lot of yeah you know sharing reception from 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 sure. my peers here had you started capers before you moved to gothenburg yeah i i i, I coined the name and i i started to play around a bit when I, when I lived in Jönköping, which is sort of in the mid South Sweden. But you hadn't really established yourself no, or no. released, released stuff at that point. No, okay. I hadn't. I, I, I used to play death metal and all that, but, but uh, ah, okay. I, I never released any noise prior to that. No. What was your uh, first introduction to noise or how did you land at noise? My introduction to noise was in the, the end of the nineties. Uh, uh, we, we suddenly got internet access at our graduate school. So I, <laughs> I, I ended up hearing Merspo, I think, and some other on the relapse. I went to their website, I think, and found some, you know, samples and I listened to it. I also think it was played on the Swedish radio at some point. When, when noise was, you know, big or whatever, uh, thanks to relapse. So I, I, I was aware of it, but it, but it didn't click with me until I moved, moved, moved you know, left my parents' home uh, and I moved to Jönköping to, to study in the mid-2000s. And there was a punk venue there, uh, which put up shows and... Uh, that's where I first met Dan, and I also saw my first live noise shows. Uh, and the first noise show there that made some impact on me was Trieriks Röset, Tommy Carlson, uh, in 2008, I think. It's the same show that's on the Hot Band tape. Yes. The, the black one, yeah. The, the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. The yeah. show on that one was, yeah, it. it I had I had bought some noise tapes there, but but um, yeah, I kind I kind of liked it. I liked the aesthetic and I liked the sounds, but I, it didn't really, you know, I I, I had no, I, I couldn't imagine how the sounds were made or anything. So when I saw Tommy played, uh, and he you know he, he yeah, how ecstatic it was, you know. Tell me about that. Tell me about him playing. Like what what was that like? Well, it was me and my buddy in the audience. <laughs> it was That's us two. Too. Yeah. And, you know, maybe some drunk punk, you know, who just came there out of habit, but didn't, you know, really watch it. So he just walked in and out of the room. And it was the sound guy uh, as well who recorded the show. Yeah. So it was us. Wow. Yeah. So and a fantastic show. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it was amazing. Is that also the first time you met Tommy? Yeah, but I didn't know him then, and and we I I don't think we I I might have bought a tape from him or something. I think I bought Killing for Germany then. Uh, 
Cool. Awesome. Um, yeah, we, 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 I, yeah, we, we didn't know each other then. No. Yeah. What's the current state of, um, Gothenburg noise scene like in this year, 2021? Well, it's uh, sort of waned off, you know, the kids aren't, you know, <laughs> they're in, they aren't into this stuff. So it, we, we're, uh, we're getting old, <laughs> <laughs> I think, but, but Dan and me are still doing it, but, uh, pretty much no activity besides us. No shows? Uh, there are shows for some reason, you know, once in a while we've had, we've had the pandemic now, but, um, there, there are still people of book shows here. There's this, where you played, for example, the the, the Geiger studio, they are still doing shows. Uh, that place is amazing. I can't believe that's, uh, I mean, a professional, recording studio that wants to book noise shows and do professional sound and record it professionally is yeah they, they aren't really you know uh, like a pure noise bunch but they they sure. they are always interested in experimental stuff uh so whenever some international artist noise artist is is you know coming this way uh if I have the time, I check with them and yeah. yeah. sometimes they, they're up for it. So, I mean, there are not too many performers here, I'd say, but there is definitely an audience for, for noise. More like that, yeah. And we, we have some venues and yeah. You've also, um, you also recently joined Heinz Hopf, maybe not so recently, but in the past few years. You joined yeah. Heinz Hopf. 2015. Yeah. 2015. Okay. <laughs> Everything has, uh, time has, uh, slowed down for me, but you joined Heinz Hopf, which was originally Dan and, um, Matthias Anderson. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, what's your, what's your role in the group? Well, now it's, it's more like me and Dan now, I think, uh, Matthias, uh, okay. So we can start at the beginning. Uh, I joined Heinz Hopf uh, as payment for uh, a bag full of sold out Harsh Head Rituals cassettes. <laughs> uh, Dan cleaned out his closet and he said uh, he, he handed me the bag at a party and said, take this, uh, but you have to join Heinz Hopf for the show <laughs> at the Röset Festival later this year. So. And yeah, we sure. all ha- had a few beers and stuff. So I <laughs> at least said yes, even though I, I hate to perform live. So you do, I do. Yeah. Okay. Uh, with a passion. So... <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but uh, you know, against better instincts, uh, I said yes. So yeah. That was the first show, and and I I I basically I just had a a cassette player and, and no pedal or anything with, with source sounds on, which I played very very loud, mm-hmm. so they became distorted, uh, <laughs> and it w- w- the cable was sort of glitching, but uh, when it was in, uh, my sounds you know. Shout out Dominated. everything else, yeah. So you can hear <laughs> Dan and Matthias when when my cable were in. The show was over in five minutes because Dan <laughs> stage dived from from the the gear table and he broke his glasses. Yeah. But then it continued on to also recordings. You've been on most of the recordings since then. Mm-hmm. I have, yeah. Uh, and how did that change the? How has that changed the process of the band? Um, I think it became worse. <laughs> I think the earlier recordings are better. What? They're less, I don't think so. I really don't. I don't agree. They're less cluttered. But, but you know? Now it's too much. I think whenever we try to do to do something, but uh, once in a while uh, we pull it off. I think uh, we have some good ones. Yeah, we haven't released that much since, since I joined the band, and M- Matthias's interest started to wane soon after that. Probably okay. not because of me, but because he. He slowly, 
he, he's not that interested in noise anymore, basically. Sure. So, sure. yeah. I feel like that you've kind of, a, when I heard that first tape that you were on, I kind of felt like you would have adopted a producer role a bit. Oh, you th you're thinking about that uh, dedicated to Yvonne Chaloske cassette, right? That you, that I did for the Geiger show, but yeah. Mm. Which I re-released. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I did that one, basically. I, I took sounds that they sent me and I added my own stuff and just ran everything into the my four track and, you know, mixed it live. And that, that was it, yeah. Because uh, Heinz Hoff always had a very live um, hand played feel to it when it was the two of them. It does, but, but it, it is very... Dan has... Dan does a lot of post-production and... Uh, Especially, okay. even, especially on the, even on the early recordings? I'm not sure about, say, those early tapes. Uh, they, I think those might be live. But then the LPs are definitely Dan mixing together stuff post-recording, yeah. Uh, and the, the Ultra Primitive LP in, in particular is, a, is a very... I think he spent a lot of time uh, putting that together. Okay. Are you still working on the LP that I've heard is <laughs> uh, underway? I mean, so much have happened. First, Dan had a kid, then I had a kid. But then that that has never been an issue for Dan because he just pumps out stuff anyway. But but uh, for me, uh, having a kid and also I work a lot. So, um, but yeah. We, we, we definitely haven't killed the project. We're still thinking about it and uh, have the intention of putting out another LP. And yeah, we're also, we, I mean, we, we played in Cincinnati in 2019, a couple of months yeah. before the pandemic hit. Right. And we've, become, we've been discussing more shows. Uh, Even though you hate performing with a passion. I do like to perform with Heinz Hopf. Uh, for some reason, I've grown to like it. Uh, mm -hmm. I have. Is it because it's a group? Yeah. A group outing and you don't have that same spotlight on you, maybe? Yeah, that's pretty much it. And also, it's it's more dynamic. And also, if if my gear so, starts to malfunction, I I have someone else to fall upon. You know. Sure. Uh, How was that tour in the United States? Uh, when I, I've been to the United States twice, uh, first in 2018, and I guess that was fine. Uh, I played a couple of shows solo, um, in, o, in Dayton at the Skeleton Dust store. That's right. That was my first solo show. So you went in 2018 and 2019? Yeah. And played shows both times? Yeah. Okay, then I might have uh, that kind of uh, mixed up, um, blurred together in my mind. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, so 2018 then. Uh, I played my first solo show ever in Dayton, Ohio. Wow. <laughs> That's, I've never performed solo in Sweden, by the way. But yeah, I, I did my first show there. Uh, at Skeleton Dust. Yeah, at Skeleton Dust. Shout out to Skeleton Dust. Yeah, definitely. He recorded it as well, so it's it's saved for posterity. Uh it was, uh, it, I was shaky, very shaky. I still am. Even the thought mm -hmm. of playing solo uh, has me, you know, nauseous for weeks. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it turned out pretty well. And the show later on in, in Brooklyn uh, also went really well. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it was pretty good. So the second time you went back, you were also kind of in the Midwest. Um, yeah, Cincinnati, uh, another Ohio <laughs> trip. Yeah, I've been to Since Ohio in... twice. <laughs> <laughs> Strange. That's heavy. Yeah. That's really heavy. I don't want to say anything bad about Ohio, but um, to have that be your only multiple exposure to the United States is uh, <laughs> definitely pretty selective and intense. But Yeah. What was your? Um, you don't need to tell me about what your impressions of uh, the United States in general are, but what what were your impressions of the the noise scene in the United States at that time? Uh, lively, I think. 
but 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 concentrated to certain spots in the country i think right i mean there there is yeah. definitely a lot of things going on in ohio yeah uh, definitely and in the new york philadelphia area i think right there's a lot going on as well i don't definitely. know about the spaces in between or or the south i mean yes some in austin i think and austin and houston yeah yeah it's very it, it is very selective because the U.S. is simply so huge too, but yeah, but there are little little weird pockets um, scattered all across in kind of places you wouldn't um, wouldn't always yeah suspect. And it's oftentimes you know just because one or two people happens to live there and then decides to kind of build a live scene. I mean, it doesn't it doesn't take much and so much a small scene to. To make something happen but yeah but ohio is very yeah Ohio is very big actually there's a lot of stuff going on and a lot of great stuff coming out of ohio yeah definitely yeah but but so, so the, the, the my solo show in cincinnati in 2019 was sort of uh it weighed in a lot on my decision to end the ms elite because it was so disastrous mm. <laughs> was that the summer scum festival mm, yeah what happened? Well, you know, the, the gear malfunction, I think it was something about the grounding, which killed my pedals. Uh, mm. And Luke stepped in mid, mid, mid set and fixed things. So it turned out, I mean, I've, I've heard pe people say they liked it, but. I heard a couple of people say it was awesome. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I didn't know. <laughs> Dan Reed said it was awesome. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he, he's he's a champ, but um, uh, I mean, I, it might have sounded okay, but but it didn't sound the way I intended it. Sure. Uh, and then I just yeah, I had been thinking about ending it, but yeah, that was the nail in the coffin, sort of. Yeah, that's fuck, fuck this. But but that's the Heinz Hop show the the day after was phenomenal. Yeah, that I was, heard that too. For it was sure. so fun. Yeah, and, it and that was just two of you, right? That was just you and Dan. That was just me and Dan. Yeah, uh, Matthias can't really travel that far, and I don't think even if he could, he he wouldn't do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, Team Borrow Tapes mm -hmm. was a label you ran for several years. Um, are you? Is it dead now? Is it? Yeah, well, I, I guess so. Uh, I mean, I, I, I don't, I definitely don't have the time to dub tapes now. Yeah. And factory dubbing is out of the question for me. I've tried that a yeah. couple of times, but uh, I was never satisfied with it. I just ended yeah. up redubbing half the edition. So, right. Yeah, I basically don't, don't have the time, but I've been thinking about putting out tapes again at some point. I'm doing it myself because uh, I think it's fun, but uh, yeah, I, w I would need the time. And at some point, I, w I will do it. And who knows? I, I might put the Team Borough name on it because why not? It seems like um, it seems like you and Dan uh, and P maybe I don't know if it's the Swedish thing or just in general, but it seems like you guys like to do a lot of different projects or labels that kind of represent a moment in time and then they kind of end and then a new one starts, but it's not like a continuation of the, <laughs> of the old one. It's a, it has a new name or something like that. Like yeah. Dan I mean, had several labels now. Um, I feel in the past 10, 15 years, um, of course he had harsh head rituals, but then he had, um, yeah, you have to remind me how to pronounce it. Banking ritual. That, uh, that spanking ritual, uh, um, and then uh, his CD label. Yeah, you you look a bit to cool. Exactly, and, and which was great, but and also like very short lived. lived. What, what did you, you say? Know, it, it was great, but also very short lived. You know, it had uh, came out for a few years, and he was very active, releasing CDs, really high quality stuff, and yeah. uniform look, and then that kind of ended, and now he's doing Malign editions. He's doing Usagi with you. Yeah. So, I mean, I guess that's just an aesthetic choice, but um, if you start doing tapes again, do you think you'll 
regenerate Team Boro? I, 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 I mean, it would definitely have the same look because that's 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 how my tapes look when I when I put them together, cut and paste and uh, transfer letters and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, what's the history behind your influence on your aesthetic? Because I feel like there's a lot of um, like comic or cartoon influence in mm. um, in kind of the the, the typeface and the just the layout. And then again, again, I think I feel like that's also a Swedish thing that I'm uh, not so uh, informed on. But you have a lot of you know you also have Tommy with uh, always doing these stickers and layouts with these kind of like. 60s 70s like balloony hand-drawn <laughs> uh uh fonts and graphics so what's yeah. what, what's behind that what's the influence there the influence is definitely partly from tommy and his aesthetic with the chef's ideologians bolag uh i i i just love how 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 he does you know visuals in general he's very good at that and also i think uh when I started Timbora, I wanted my tapes to look exactly like uh, Thorax harsh cassettes with just bold mm. font on the spine and mm -hmm. some, yeah, some yeah. You know, basic nasty imagery or yeah. sort of. But but then I've never been much for nudity or whatever, so sure. I cut that out because yeah, you know, yeah. I work for the city of Gothenburg and people can Google my name, so yeah. <laughs> I'm careful. <laughs> Um, sure, but yeah, basically, it, it, yeah, I, I love Thorax Harsh, but I wouldn't uh, have made that direct connection because Team Bor has very, and I also I do see the influence of of Tommy's stuff, but I think that Team Bor also has a very specific aesthetic. Yeah, maybe I, I think it, it took, I mean, it it, it kind of took off visually. Uh, initially, it was more like I wanted it to look like Nolan stuff. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> but but then uh, you know I tried different things but yeah mm -hmm. I, I'm going to speak to Tommy also and ask him about this but you know do you know anything about his history with that kind of stuff and I also feel like even the Project Hat stuff mm -hmm. and um, you know stuff that uh, Lova does yeah also has a certain they're different but they have a certain like tradition of these hand drawn um, slightly vintage but also kind of futurist graphics do you know yeah. anything behind that? well i'm i think i think tommy for example did the has done the layout for a couple of osho releases such as the drypan cassette on gothenburg blood cult i'm pretty sure that's tommy because it's those mm -hmm. grand for letters mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and everything it's yeah it's i think it's it's a penis on the cover that would be <laughs> i think that's a tommy thing also, yeah. Luve, who has a sort of silly humor, uh, though he yeah. wouldn't admit it, I think. <laughs> uh, and I, I also know Tommy did the layout for the Tversnit LP on Virlautbavum. So, okay, I think, and and those are they, they are all old old pals as well. So I, yeah, of course, they taught Luve and Tommy. So I'm I'm sure they influence each other as well. Yeah. This episode of White Centipede Noise podcast is brought to you by New Forces. Coming soon on New Forces, the debut full-length CD from Mass Marriage, the best-kept secret in heavy electronics. A CD of Evil Moisture's classic album Gak, remastered from the original source tape. New cassettes by Cost, Robert Fuchs, and Mott, each offering a unique approach to harsh noise. Visit the New Forces store for older releases and distro titles, including Richard Ramirez, CCCC, Kufar, Aaron Dilloway, Jeff German, Altar of Flies, Kyostad, Sissy Spacek, Killer Bug, and much more. So you run now, you do with Dan, you do Usagi Productions. Yes. What's the approach behind Usagi? Well, uh, I, I, I felt, uh, you know, doing tapes took too much time. Uh, and also, uh, my girlfriend was pregnant, so... I, I I I just couldn't do it anymore, and I yeah, and tapes are becoming so expensive to do. Uh, 
So I just felt, why not put out, a, a, you know, CDs in addition, in bigger editions, because it doesn't cost much, much more than releasing a cassette. So right, yeah. And then I suggested to Dan that I wanted to put put out uh, his the cassette he did for Tim Bora called Dismal, the serial mm -hmm. tape called yes. Dismal. I put put it out as a CD, and he was yeah. really into the idea. Now it didn't turn out that way, but he was really into doing CDs again. Yeah. Uh, and I guess maybe he sees it as a sort of continuation of his old CD label. Uh, There's been a resurgence of CDs. Do you think CDs have a, a lasting future, or do you think it's um, do you think it's kind of a fad? I don't know. Uh, it seems when, when Tronics, you know, came back into business. Now I think uh, it, it, it was definitely a resurgence. Yeah. For for that format, and I I think it was Tronics basically who, I don't know. And I also think um, a lot of Americans listen in their car. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's that's where the CD comes in, I guess. I think um, you're right. I think it, people were talking about how the CD was going to come back. I think, you know, kind of like late 2019. You, you mean I remember you bringing it up to me mm -hmm. a few years ago, also that you wanted to do this tape, this CD label, and that you wanted to. Um, you were thinking about doing some CDs and yeah, and I mentioned it to a lot of people. With me, yeah, CDs are going to be the, the next; they're going to come back again. And <laughs> and then I think it was, and then I think it was Electronics. Yeah, and I think discovering that um, that there's a, a a quite cheap, good quality pressing plant. Yeah, in Poland. Yeah, available in Poland, which uh, is quite fast and very inexpensive and decent quality. So I think it's been like since then it's been, it's 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 blown up totally. Yeah. And I think it also has a lot of, uh, a lot to do with the, uh, you know, the, the turnaround sound time for pressing vinyls is, I mean, it's getting yeah. longer and longer and longer. So, I mean, I think a lot of labels think why wait six or seven months for an LP when you, we can press a CD and have it in two or three weeks. So yeah, uh, absolutely. And to like a fraction of the price. So yeah. Yeah. And a lot, uh, also, people are less willing to pay for vinyls now, I think, because you, you need to charge a lot of money for them because they're so expensive to make. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's kind of sad because at least it feels to me like when, when someone does an LP, they, they put in a little more effort into the recording. Oftentimes, I yeah. Think, yeah, and, and yeah. we need more proper albums in noise there's been too yeah. too many c20s yeah <laughs> I, I mean i i like i like c20s but uh and i think it yeah too many c20s and band camp links basically. yeah absolutely how do you feel about the current um state of networking and i guess uh, marketing so to speak that you know uh instagram is kind of like one of the main, if not the main platform that people, you know, spread and share information. Bandcamp is, is huge. I mean, there are things like noise podcasts now. I mean, like <laughs> this, for example, how, what, what's your, what's your feeling about all this? Well, the, the marketing thing, I, I mean, I, I can see why labels have to resort to that, but I don't like it. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't like spending too much time on social media. Um, and I certainly don't like having to check, check my social media to, to be able to, you know, buy a new cassette. I mean, yeah. yeah which is gone in a blink because people yeah. are, you know, hunching over their phones 24 hours. So, yeah. Um, uh, What's with your boy Dan? Because that's something I, I I'm frustrated with him that he does is that he exclusively releases uh, <laughs> his new stuff. He does <laughs> through Instagram. Yeah, and it's also in uh, you know absurdly low quantities, yeah. and then only only marketed through Instagram. So if you're not taking part in that and not taking part in it twenty four seven, you're missing it. Yeah. Uh, I think it, it, 
first of all, I think he, I, well, I'm speaking for him, so I guess he'll have to send you an email if he disagrees. <laughs> but I, I think he wants to get rid of the tapes fast. Yeah. And I also don't think, believe he doesn't feel very at home on forums anymore or anything. Sure. For example, where you where you normally, you know, announce your cassette. I, I he doesn't do special interests anymore, or he's yeah. not on there. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's basically it. And he he he, he doesn't announce you know nasty cassette on his personal Facebook page either. If that was sure. a, so, that's not an option either. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I understand. It has its. It has its definitely a unique. It has its unique uh, uses. Yeah, but but then I think yeah the the marketing. Uh, I did announce a lot of stuff with Tim Boro on social media, but uh, I was never really comfortable with it. I preferred if people reached out to me through forums or through my lousy web page, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I I, I think. You still I have have a website, yeah. Yeah, okay. Uh, it's it's very. I don't know about. It. It's uh, yeah, I coded it myself in HTML coding. Cool. Yeah, so it's it's very basic. It's just a drawing, cool. and a few titles, and an email address. That's it. Great. I have to get that link. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, how is it running, by the way? A label with another person. You run Usagi together with Dan. How does that work out? Well, as it happened, uh, my kid arrived the same week our first two CDs came out. So Dan, being a dad, he understands that having a small kid uh, takes a lot of time. So he's handled a lot of it. Cool. Uh, he's he's done a lot of the layout stuff. Uh, we choose the artists together and we, you know, keep in touch with the artists. Mm -hmm. uh, but so far he's done most of the visual work and the wholesale bit. Uh, I've handled a lot of the retail orders. Uh, mm -hmm. It's very, it works very well because uh, I'm a, we're, we're good friends and we, he lives like 10 minute walk from here. So cool. Uh, we can just, you know, deliver CDs to each other. So it's, it's nice. It's very convenient. Yeah. That's great. It seems like it could be difficult, but it, I think if it's the right partnership, it could be. Yeah. Uh, and, and the label is still very young, you know, so we'll, we'll see where it goes. Uh, and if we'll be CD exclusive, I don't, I'm not sure. Uh, I, I'm not against like putting out vinyls or, or cassettes in the future, but uh, I'm I don't know what, what Dan thinks. I, I think he's very he's very comfortable with the CD because it's so sure. convenient. Uh, mm -hmm. So yeah, what's coming up next on Usagi? Uh, Macronympha Ultimate Vibrator Reissue Double CD will be really cool. The master, I don't know where, where it is. So, so we basically used a very clean dance, very clean sounding copy of it and had it remastered at the Geiger studio uh, wow. by the sound technician there who's very good. Um, yeah. And there's also some extra tracks which Roger provided us, uh, which are sort of sketches and, you know, basically material from the same sessions yeah, will be on there as Great. well. The other CD that's coming up is uh, a, a trio from the US called the Flea Circus, who uh, it's Shane English, Christian Mirand and Stuart Skinner. Uh, mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, and they are, yeah, they're doing uh, basically all sounding industrial. Uh, I know Shane English is quite the aficionado of old industrial, so I think his influence weighs heavy on that. Cool. But uh, yeah, it's it's great stuff. So awesome. Uh, I think it's uh, in a way it sounds fresh. No, no one does that kind of stuff anymore. You know, it sounds like an old sound of pig tape or something. So right. You know, 
And I always love to do stuff with Stuart Skinner. So, yeah. Yeah, I still, uh, he's still kind of an enigma. He's an he's, enigma to you? Yeah, he's yeah. operating um, kind of, he's operating really low key. Yeah, he's very and, low key. Uh, and I haven't heard like near all of what he's put out, but everything I hear is quite, uh, quite interesting and quite unique. And he yeah. seems to be kind of a, a ringleader of a lot of uh, interesting collaborations and 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 projects. Yeah, he always involves a lot of people, uh, yeah. including me. I mean, w w me and him and Thomas D'Angelo. Sometimes we we have this mm -hmm. band called Svangspiglukstretum. Yeah, and uh, right. yeah, so we've done a couple of tapes. Uh, uh, three, four, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> and also other projects, yeah. So The tapes have, the tapes have also been reissued by Will on Prosnag. Yeah, they did. Yeah, he, he put it out as a CDR, the first two cassettes. Yeah. yeah. And we Very also cool. played a show in Austin. Okay. Yeah, when, when on my first, you know, tour in the US, <laughs> uh, me, we, we, I met up with uh, with, with uh, Stuart and Thomas D'Angelo in Austin, and we, we played a show at, at a bar there. Yeah. How did it go? Pretty well, yeah. Uh, we didn't rehearse or anything. We just... <laughs> so it was crazy. It's a, I assume it's a male project only. It was a male pro. It, it is a male project, yeah. Uh, usually, I'm the one who puts it all together. At least I did so for the first two cassettes. Uh, say, same way I always do. I just mix everyone's sounds live into my my four track. Yeah, sure. So that's that's my my modus. This episode of White Centipede Noise podcast is brought to you by Scream and Writhe Distro and Absurd Exposition Label, Canadian based source for experimental electronics, harsh noise, power electronics, etc. Over one thousand items in stock on all formats. Media mail shipping to the USA and affordable international shipping. Available Friday, November 5th. Normal Rituals, another center tape. And Coastal Flood, other frontiers, triple three inch CDR compilation of cult Canadian noise. Forthcoming in 2022. Mersbau, Aqua Necromancer expanded double LP, reissue of the essential psych noise mantra from 1998. Plus releases from Alex York, Hermit, Neural, Mott, the Nausea, The Rita, Violent Shogun, Wince, and more. Visit ScreamAndWrithe.com or AbsurdExposition.BandCamp.com. So you've had a baby recently. Um, <laughs> yeah. How do you reconcile noise life with family life? I know it's young. I know it's uh, early in uh, the child's life, but how does that work out now? And how do you see that going in the future? Uh... Well, uh, it, it certainly halted all my activity. Uh, uh, besides the, the Yusagi thing then, mm -hmm. which, uh, I mean, I, I, I can find an hour now and then to wrap up some orders and, and mail mm -hmm. them out, but, and, you know, listen to masters on the bus. Right. But uh, I haven't recorded anything since like winter i think or sometime last year i did a private cassette you know called uh fungi which i mailed out yep. to a few people yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that was the last thing i recorded i think yeah so uh, there's no no time at all for recording sure uh and i i, I li we live in a small two room apartment. So I, I can't keep my stuff plugged in anywhere. I have to take it out and, you know, figure out a good setup. That would take a lot of time. So yeah, I can really use a rehearsal space to just go to. Uh, what about listening around the house? I can listen when Evelina and Hilma uh, have gone to bed for the night. But On headphones. Oh, on headphones, definitely, okay. <laughs> definitely no speakers. Okay. I mean, uh, I I rarely listen to noise through speakers e even before the uh, the baby arrived because Evelina hates noise. Really? 
hates. I mean, I I used I drag her to shows. I mean, she, sure. she she's seen testicle hazard, you know. <laughs> so uh, she she saw wins, I think. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, so yeah, I, I listen okay. to headphones through headphones at night sometimes. But usually I'm, I'm so tired after work and having, you know, played around with the kid for hours yeah. when I get home. So, yeah, it's, but so you, but you don't see it stopping or you, you, you feel like it's still, yeah, it, still I mean, yeah. The, the, the baby is very small right now. So of course it needs like, she's six months now. So yeah. she's still very small, um, yeah. but, uh, I mean, I, I still think about uh, what I will record, projects that I have. I'm working on a fan scene since like years. <laughs> yeah, tell me about that. I'm not too stressed about I It's just, you know, interviews. Uh, and I'm also thinking about like writing longer articles. You do a lot of writing. And that's, that's one thing I mentioned in the intro. You do a lot of writing reviews you have a very uh lively and expressive writing style and a really great writing style well thank um, you yeah and i write i, I write I think, all uh, the time it would be great if you start a zine i know that people would be really happy to read that you've you're yeah. spattering on the various noise boards and things like that have uh always yeah piqued people's interest. so i think you should definitely go for that uh, i i'm I, I do see myself more as a listener than a than a creator, really. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I I write a lot about noise. Uh, I don't publish most of it. I, I just write it in my notebooks. Wow. Uh, I write I write reviews for uh, most things I I, I buy or or get. Um, cool. So in English, typically. No, in Swedish. Uh, but once in a while, I post something uh, yeah. online. Uh, but yeah, mo most of it goes in Swedish into my notebooks. Great. In ink. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> so I write. I write a lot, and I, I also write some. Yeah, well, I write articles dealing with concepts or ideas about noise. Which I haven't really published, but yeah, they're there. Yeah, that's something you should definitely collect yeah. and yeah, and I, that's that's the point of the scene that I, I want I want to put it some of it to print. Really, uh, but yeah. I, I, then again, I'm I'm not that stressed about it, and I think uh, to me, I I mean I can read all you know old reviews. It doesn't have to be up to date. I I don't care about that stuff. So. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, if 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 the if the text is good, it, it holds up, you know. So at some point there will be a scene, uh, but it can it can be next year or or in five years. I don't know. Sure. I mean, interviewed, interviewed a, a couple of people. Uh, there will be more at some point. But yeah, yeah. excellent, awesome. I remember when we spoke originally about an interview, I was uh, actually, my original concept was to do a video interview and then transcribe it to a zine. Mm -hmm. I think I wrote you about interviewing you back then. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. It's now uh, just become the video interview. Yeah. You know, focus, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I mean, th this is exciting stuff, I think. Uh... I feel I feel like there's a lot of the the journalism, or if you want to call it that, uh, around noise music in particular, could be so much better. I think. Yeah. I'm not saying I'm I'm the person to do it, but I I, I at least yeah I, I feel it could be so much more in a way. It could be more. It could be more in quantity, also simply. Yeah, more Even in quantity and more in in depth. I think. And... That absolutely too, but I think it's also kind of um, astonishing how there's just so little actual information, you know, being documented. Yeah, and there's so much I think oral history and 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 
and things going on that don't get ever spread beyond either the individual themselves or maybe the few people or a few emails. Sometimes you get stuff posted on some random threads on a Facebook post yeah. um, or on a forum, but that's also, uh, that's also temporary. And there's, it would be really, really great to somehow put some sort of tome together or, or some sort of, I mean, I don't know if anyone wants to read a thousand page book about all this shit, but <laughs> it's still somehow, I think to, to actively continually, continuously document it. It's, uh, yeah, it's happening because it's not that hard, and I'm not saying that quality isn't important because that's of course an in-depth quality is important. But I still think uh, people just writing something or or recording something, uh, more of them would be also a a step in the right direction. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I'd be fine with a good old web scene, even. Yeah, I mean, I mean, exactly. just yeah. more more. More proper writing, I think, about noise and about its connections to other arts, art forms, and and whatnot. There's because whenever I, I read, you know, whenever you read, I mean, noise scenes, it's it feels so isolated in a way. I think it, there are ra- rarely any parallels drawn to other art forms, or it's just right just basically show reviews and reviews i mean they might be good written but yeah yeah, it could be so much more i think yeah Yeah. i think so too and and i think also questions um when interviewing artists i i hope to sort of scratch that and open up that potential i'm not sure if i'm doing it yet at all but i want to have sort of i want to know more about an artist than just um what was your, you know, favorite piece of gear and what was your favorite uh, show? I mean, that's cool yeah. too, but, but I somehow want w- with these conversations, want to find a way to tap into. Yeah. Who, like who is the person what's behind, who are they and what are they, what are they thinking beyond, uh, you know, they wanted to make something brutal and they did it and then they traded yeah, it. Exactly. Oh, yeah. And I, I'm, I'm sort of sick about the gear thing, you know, yeah. I mean, I, I used to play guitar, but I didn't really read guitar. I mean, you know, any guitar mags. I read music mags, you know. I, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't care about gear. Right. They're just gadgets. Gear's, part, gear's interesting. It's part of it, but it's like... Yeah, but there's, a, there's a limit, you know. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What's, um, what's one thing about noise, the noise scene in 2021 that really bothers you? Uh, That's a good question. I think a lot of stuff bothers me. Tell me more than one. More than one. (laughs) You can tell me up to three. Well, the first thing that comes to mind is basically what we touched upon earlier with social media and, and Bandcamp. Uh, I mean, it's, it's, you know, it's an easy target, I guess. Sure. And uh, I guess it's easy to come off as some old fart, you know. But, uh, yeah, I mean, it feels... It sort of degrades the whole thing for me. Uh, Do you think it's changed how people listen? Uh, yeah, I, certainly. I mean, whenever, for example, I, I I check on forums or or the Facebook group Noise Now Playing, I wonder if some people even own stereos or have any sort of setup to listen to, or if they just I don't know. Uh, and I feel there's no people should put more effort into record proper albums. I, th- I think it was Scott Faust of uh, ID Fire Company who, in one of his annual newsletters, which he sends out to customers, uh, 
um, he, he he asked himself if is anyone even trying to record a masterpiece anymore? I don't know. Yeah, yeah. People people aren't really putting their heart into it. I think. I mean, some do. I'm sure. I think some are for sure, but I think I think that also is connected to the listening. Uh, yeah. The listening gap. Yeah. Um, I know. Like I was talking to Jason Krumer recently, and he was super distraught that he feels like his new album and even the previous one, but his newest one has gone kind of un unappreciated and people aren't really. Yeah. Because he puts a lot of heart into his stuff. Yeah. It's very, very personal. And I think on some way that, that, that does speak to the way that people are listening. I do think that people, well, I have seen to be fair, a lot of high praise of it. But I also think, uh, yeah, I think people kind of treat listening kind of like uh, eating cheeseburgers sometimes, like kind of one and done. Um, yeah. But I also think it also spoke to kind of this also expectation to see on Instagram enough people posting something yeah. to kind of show that that people are listening to it. It's it's um. Yeah, I wonder if people people actually develop any relation to albums anymore. Uh, like, buy less, listen more. I think is a which is good. I do that now when I have a kid. I can't spend that much money, so the little I get, I actually try to really listen to. Uh, and actually, and and try to articulate some proper thoughts on it as well uh, because w w with so f so few fan scenes coming out and stuff i think it's i mean it's un ungrateful releasing albums now uh, you yeah. get so you get so little back you mean yeah i mean like some you, yeah you, you get some you know flame emoji on instagram and that's it you know <laughs> if it's good a few five stars on Discog mm -hmm. um, within the first two weeks, maybe a few mentions on some. Exactly. And, board, yeah. and which, this... you know, I, which I don't know. I mean, then I, but I asked myself then why are we releasing it? Are really, are we making noise for, for of course it's there to communicate, but exactly. I don't know. Yeah. Making it for, I think you should be making it for yourself ultimately. Yeah, you should, but, but still, I mean, this connects with what I said earlier about we need more proper writing that, I mean, the the artists, the good artists deserves more proper writing about their yeah. works, I think. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Rather than just short comments scattered yeah. here and there. If those are some things that you're disappointed about in the mm -hmm. current state of life, what are some things that you're hopeful about or that you're enjoying or, or that, are, that you're really into? in the current moment in, in noise? Well, uh, that's also a good question. Uh, I said, oh, well, I haven't really thought about that. Uh, it's hard to come up with something, even though I am quite content with, with, with how things are in general. Uh, it's hard to point out. I, I, I'm glad that, that some of my older peers are still active mm -hmm. and are still, you know, at the forefront, sort of. Yeah. Dan is still great and he's even getting better, I think. And, and Tommy as well, whenever he decides to release something. Yeah. And also Louvre in Stockholm with, with yep. Bochu and all that. Uh, rather than new names, I think. Mm -hmm. There are new artists, you know, popping up once in a while that I really like. Uh, Star, for example. Uh, yes. Yeah. Uh, you know, these sort of, yeah. Yeah, that, that's something I, I'm I'm very happy about. There are some like I feel there's a slight resurgence of you know these unruly 
fellows. Uh, <laughs> that's something I've been missing. That that's what's been grinding my gears. I think. Star, it's been... um, I haven't had a chance to check it out yet, but I'm waiting on it. Actually, Robert Fuchs. Yeah. Oh, that's that's uh, he's I, I Sam Star. Uh, yes. He sent me a, t a Robert Fuchs tape uh, earlier this year, and it was yeah. absolutely fantastic. And it's a really young guy. Cool. That's what he told me too. Yeah. And it sounds so so weird. Yeah. <laughs> Wait. Uh, and that's that's what I've been missing. I think in in, in noise in recent years, these sort of wild, unpredictable savages basically i mean in the 90s you had like crack steel and all this R robo chan man like wild messed up who, who didn't fit in sort of but still did great noise that was coming from totally unexpected directions you know and yeah i i feel there's a slight resurgence in that with Star and Robert Fuchs and uh, well, Skinner has been going for a few years, but he's still he, he he's definitely part of that. And I, I hope to see more of that. As much as I like, you know, professional. I, I mean, the, the bar is quite high today, for t technically speaking. For you know, people are skilled now doing noise. You have, you have you know, like Jackson Pratt and Blind Date and all, all those guys in the U.S. They are they are great, but it I I I I'm, I I've been missing the weirdos, but I I feel that like they're they're coming now. Yeah, there's worth too. I think worth is always uh, yeah hugely worth mentioning. Of course, he's been doing it for fifteen Many years. years. Yeah. He was like a young teenager, but. Um, continually reinventing himself and kind of carving his totally own own lane and own style. Yeah, he, he's definitely, he's also coming from, you know, a weird place that no one, and I think the, the box that you put out recently is like the even more strange. And I like how he's combining He's combining his sounds with 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 writings, with ideas, yeah, and a prose exactly. that is, yeah. I mean, he, his what what he does is he incorporates more stuff, basically, more yeah. art forms in, into yeah. into his package, sort of, yeah. Which I really like, and I hope to see that from more artists. Yeah, uh, definitely. Definitely. Work, work, work on the bigger picture, not just the sounds. Don't, don't be lazy with the visuals. Uh, set the set the bar high in other ways than just sound and and your sound skills. That's and I, I yeah I think there will will be more of that. Give me your top five noise releases of all time. Oh, <laughs> wow! Yeah, that's yep. that's that's tough. Um, well, you should have sent me this question. No, I didn't want to. You didn't want to? No. I want. I want it right now. You want it right now? Wow. Well, uh, from the top of my head, then uh, I think. Uh, the new blockaders, Symphony in X Major, uh, Incapacitance Opero Ru. I don't know how to pronounce that, but yeah, I love that one. Uh, uh, I definitely want to include. Uh, I'm looking at my shelf here. Uh, <laughs> uh, oh, uh, MSBR, and I think I'll pick intensification today. Mm -hmm. Okay. How many are that? Three? Three. Huh? Got two more. <laughs> wow, this is painful. Uh, um, I, I'll stick my neck out and say 
the latest record by NEM. Yes. Uh, Electrion. Yes. That is That's all time top five. I think so. It, it will. Uh, it has the potential to grow to be at least um, yep. because cool. I absolutely good. love that band. Yeah, good pick. And that, that's also a band which, without any imagery, can conjure the strangest of emotions and 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 soundscapes and you know, absolutely strangest vistas, sort of. Yeah. Yes, definitely. And a lot of the texts that have often go, gone uh, accompanying, like the descriptions, have also been so so evocative. I mean, I think Tommy or someone wrote the World War One bunker that is Nem or something like this. That was me. Um, that was you. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I think some of the, some of the 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 ways it's been it's so anomalous and so obscure. It's some of the ways that people have tried to describe it are also so great. Yeah. But, but but these all exist um, independent of the actual band itself, mm. which is also very mis- I don't know. It's a very mysterious band at the same time. Yeah. I. I, I... Apparently, very strange people as well, uh, from what I've heard. Yeah, uh, not normal people. Uh, okay. <laughs> and uh, I have one left, right? Yes, one left. I'll pick uh, Speculum Fight Swimming Pool LP. Okay, cool. Uh, an absolutely fantastic noise LP, uh, which contains so much. Uh, it, it has everything that Damian Romero is is great at, with like booming drone to wild, wild freakouts with just feedback and, and tape sounds and it's a fantastic LP. Uh, cool. Yeah, I haven't heard it. I, I will need to follow up on it. You you definitely need to need to pick that up, and it's available for like I don't know less than ten bucks, so you have cool. no excuse whatsoever. Good. You need it, yeah. All right, one more thing. I'm not mm-hmm. going to make you pick five, but what are your top three re- top three releases of the past year? Well, the past year, this year, or last year, or doesn't have to be 2021, but let's just say in the past recent, 12 months. recent releases. Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, definitely the one you have on your shirt there. Testicle mm. hazard. Give me five. I said I said three. I was trying to be uh, merciful, but give me five. I think you can I, give me five. I can give you five. This this yeah. is easier. Testicle okay. hazard album there on your shirt. Fifty cool. sixty. Yep. Uh, I, I've been a long time fan of them, and uh, they played in Gothenburg twice. Uh, the last ten years, I don't know. I've, I've I saw both times, and they're such an incredible unit. Those two. And they're so inventive and they're so skilled, yet they, they're also available to yeah, just let themselves go. It's amazing. And that one is their, yeah, they've never sounded better. Yet it's a 10, 10 year old recording, but it's, it's just amazing. And uh, I want to say, Trierix uh, Reset, the self titled C60. Yep. In the private version. Uh, not the gray box, it's a black box, uh, which uh, you're not allowed to f- take photos of and post online. So you can't see it, but it's 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 quite a thing. Uh, I def- Because it's the most ambitious packaging I have in my shelves and I have a lot of stuff and that's, it's, it's, it's on a, on a level that's beyond in, in care and effort and concept and everything. It's just, it's a piece of art, that box. Uh, I, I, I have it stacked away because of my kid now. I don't, I don't want her to pull it out, basically yeah. not to ruin it and not to see what's inside because no. yeah. oh, it's, it's it's for grown-up art. <laughs> yeah. What else are there? Uh, I think... Uh, that's two. That's two. That's two. Uh Oh, the, the new Star cassette, which is very recent. Uh, which Stan. one? Utris. Yeah. 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 That's that's the name, Utris. Yeah. Yeah. Again, 
an, an artist that just does everything in, in, in the strangest of ways. His sounds are, you know, always a bit tilted. It's, everything is a little bit off. Uh, and for that release, he chose to, I mean, the liner notes or whatever it is, is in Portuguese. <laughs> it's not Portuguese. <laughs> There's no yeah. reason for him providing Portuguese. And That'd he always idea. has these, you know, bewildering little inserts and, and stuff in his cassettes. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's, yeah, it's just plain weird. Uh, There's more coming from him soon. There is, yeah, I, I certainly hope so. Yeah. I, I want to say something by Stuart Skinner. Yeah, he, he did an, a no-name cassette. He just had a title. I did the layout for it, so, so I'm partly biased, but he he was basically locked up in a was locked up, but he, he lived in this shabby house in in Austin. He lived in the attic there, uh, I think. And he there were we we stayed there when we were were on tour in two thousand eighteen. There were just huge cockroaches roaches everywhere. And dogs. It was just a, it was a nightmare. But but so in that place he recorded the weirdest cassette. I think it's 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 all room recorded, mm -hmm. and it's loud, wild noise for close to an hour. And it it sounds it's in the spin spirit of Mont de Bruy, sort of, uh, which I think very few today can. I I don't think they have it in them. I mean, the skills are certainly there, but the mindset. I think is few people have the mindset to record something that sounds like that today, but he has that. And that cassette, uh, I think it's untitled 2000. No, it, it's, it's, it's called recorded 2019. I think. Cool. Wow. <laughs> so again, he, he released it and he put it out himself. So it's available nowhere. Yeah. Uh, but it's, it's an amazing album. Uh, so one more then. One more. <laughs> this is this is torture. No. Uh, well, I, I'll just go ahead and pick some. I mean, I mean, this is from like 2017, but I'll pick it anyway because that's, that's recent to me. Yeah. <laughs> the Jim Haynes album called "Electrical Injuries." Aha. Uh -huh, okay. Uh, definitely to pick up if you like Nem. Uh, okay, cool. Also, an otherworldly sort of industrial, which you don't get to hear much of these yeah. days. Uh, Do you know who put that out off the top of your head? He put it out himself on his Helen Scarsdale. No, okay. it's 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 released on Auf Abwegen, I think. Really? Yeah. That guy lives in Cologne. Yeah, check with him. He might have a few copies. I just did a trade with him, though, but I didn't see it on his list. No, it might be sold out. Okay. But what? No, it might, sorry, sorry. It was released on Außenraum. Ah, uh -huh, okay. <laughs> Different label. I don't know it. I, 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 I don't want to get up and go fetch the LP, but yeah. That's fine. Mm, uh, Jim Haynes, Electrical Injuries. Uh, in the tradition of old old industrial but done with present day skills mm -hmm. conjuring these strangest of sceneries i think uh which is rare yeah. for me to get locked into an album from the first second absolutely stellar stuff yeah awesome. so All right there you there you have it i think great great list yeah Okay, cool, man. Well, um, I appreciate you uh, sitting down with me. And, yeah, uh, it was a pleasure. I, I hope I sounded somewhat coherent. Uh, you did. That I'm was not great. used to speaking English, so. Sure, no, it was, it was great. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I don't know. R record less, but record more proper. It's it's my word to the young. Yeah, yeah, definitely. 
Uh, don't put out a lot of shit. Don't, yeah. <laughs> All right. Thank you, Eric. And, thank you, Oscar. Uh, thank you for joining us and uh, talk to you later. Yeah. Ciao. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for tuning into White Centipede Noise Podcast. Please hit the like button and subscribe to this channel. This podcast is made possible by viewer and listener support. If you enjoy this podcast, please consider supporting it at patreon.com slash white centipede noise.